Thank you for coming. Now, if you've been to previous fanfares, you are probably amazed that I have a voice right now. But if you are having trouble hearing me, just please yell and I'll try and talk more into the mic. Um, we were going to have Dave Brown with us, but unfortunately he can't be with us, so bear with us. I was going to start with just a recap of trade skills in the past year. And if you've been playing the whole year, then you may be aware of some of this, but it's good to see everything all in one place. So since the last fanfare, um, obviously on the housing side, all housing had an extra room added, which was pretty awesome. And at the same time, you got to add 100 extra items into every house. And uh, we also did a lot more with moving crates. You can now add items into moving crates instead of them simply for, being, for relocating. Um, we added the house layout save and load functionality, which I know people have been very creative with. And there's an awesome um, editor, a fan-made editor, that people are using to create some amazing things. Jester. There is, um, there have been more red shiny trade skill collections added. Yay. And more to come. Yay. More crafting achievements added. Uh, the backpack size was equalized with the strong boxes, making tailors happy, I hope. Uh, we had the Cunark daily faction missions added, which should make that Cunark faction a lot less painful. And also all those uh, rewards became heirloom. And uh, crafters are now allowed to uh, trade skill up to ally faction in King Arc, which they didn't initially at launch. Um, then of course Halas came around. We have a new trade skill faction, Ravens of the North. Um, the new storylines tab, which I actually realized that some people haven't noticed yet, but if you haven't noticed this, open your quest journal. There's a new tab there called storylines, and you will be able to find um, an ordered storyline to help you keep track of quests that are in a zone, see what you've done and which are available to you, and that does include trade skill quest lines. Um, they all, they all of them start with the word crafting, so they're easy to find, and that should give you a little history of what you've done, or will show you what is waiting for you to do that you may have missed. Uh, we also introduced the adorning daily writ task. Oh, I seem to have listed the Red Shinies twice, because they're extra awesome. <laughs> uh, the new If I Had a Hammer crafting intro quest was added to every newbie city, uh, plus Kinos and Freeport, even though you can't start there anymore. Uh, and now we'll give you a little introductory quest, and then point you at the Trade Skill Tutor, who gives you the tutorial series. That's to help get brand new players pointed in the right direction to start trade skilling. Um, and we also added some bulk dust distillation recipes for alchemists. You'd already have like the one at a time, but now you can do them in bulk if you weren't aware of that. Go see Alchemist Genesia again. And then of course there was Sentinel's Fate. We added over 70 new trade skill quests in Otis, which is more than pretty much existed in the game before completely. Um, over 200 new recipe books between all of the classes. Um, that was about 2,700 new recipes. We added four new factions for the crafters to work for, obviously the Kara, the Huamain, the researchers of Quelul, and the craft keepers. And uh, we also revamped the transmuting and adorning to make it a little more intuitive the way it works. And uh, we introduced EQ2's first ever trade skill signature quest, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> if you were at the lore panel yesterday, we did a little review of the lore in that, and uh, we tried really hard to give a little more lore involvement to the trade schoolers during that quest, and I think that people enjoyed it, and I certainly hope that we'll be able to continue doing that. And of course, also with Sentinel's Fate, you could be both a tinker and an adorner. So, what do you have to look forward to? Well, Game Update 57 is almost upon us, and um, it's been very focused on trade skill quests. So you may have seen them on test server already, or perhaps you haven't yet, but the goal is to ensure that trade skillers have some fun alternatives to trade skill writs in all the level ranges. Now I have been adding quests ever since I joined the team, but they've mainly been at the higher levels, which is where our expansion content, content has been. So in 57 I've gone back and I've looked at those lower level ranges, particularly the 10 to 30 range where there weren't really any quests, and added a bunch of quest lines in. And yes, you'll find these in your storyline window. So, in the level 10 range, in New Halas, 
you uh, you will find both for good guys and evil guys. There's two separate quest givers, and you'll do one of those lines depending on your alignment. Uh, neutrals will do the evil. I mean, not neutrals. Exiles will do the evil line. And, um, those kind of run in parallel, so it's well worth doing them on two different alts just to see both sides of the story. The level 20 range. Um, we have a new quest line in Butcher Walk. You're going to help the Farsi's Trading Company. And uh, one of the nice rewards from that will be a horse. So lower level trade skillers will have a way to get, you know, a starter mount. It's not, you know, 50% run speed. It's about, I think it's 25 off the top of my head. But it's a great way to, uh, to get your first horse in it. It's, it's got the trade skill packs and everything. As well as a lot of other rewards. And then in level 30, we have a uh, quest line in Steampunk, which I think is a lot of fun. And we'll also point you to tinkering if you haven't made, picked it up by that time. So um, in addition to just the quest line, which gives you obviously XP, it'll give you a few rares, it'll give you a couple house items and things. Um, the Butcher Block gives you a nice um, appearance shield that you'll be able to continue making. Um, each of those quest lines will also unlock the ability to purchase the advanced recipe books. So no more searching for that. Elusive Advanced Trade Skill, Volume 29. Now you can get it. Um, so, just to give you a brief overview, um, for the level 10 quests in New Hollis, if you're evil, you'll be talking to Varla. She's from the Coalition of Tradesfolk. She is um, in the Rogues, uh, the Rogues Guild area, sort of towards the south of the city. Her mission? to convince New Hollis to sign an exclusive trading contract with the Coalition and its allied societies. She will use any methods necessary to fulfill this goal, and she is seeking your assistance. And you will be doing dastardly and underhanded deeds, such as breaking things, blowing things up, and uh, yes, you will get to craft barrels of explosives and set them off. It should be a lot of fun. On the good side, we have Tammy Swift Hammer and voice the Iron Forge Exchange. Being a helpful Kinosian and a helpful halfling, she's just generally offering assistance to New Hollis and, you know, they're building up their city. They've still got a lot of construction to do, they're still settling, pilgrims are still coming in. She's also assisting in repairing some of the strange accidents that have been occurring around town. Kind of inexplicable, I don't know how that's happening. And she's looking for your assistance. So uh, you'll find those two lines tie together really well. I think they're a lot of fun. So you'll be, you know, replacing broken spinning wheels and, like that. Then we get to Butcher Block, level 20 plus. Um, Cordelia from the Far Seas Trading Company is waiting on the docks for you, and uh, she's responsible for establishing uh, and maintaining the good trade relations with the locals, who in this case are mainly the uh, Iron Toad Dwarves, um, helping them out with their supplies, fighting the Kobolds and their other enemies there, and she'll be seeking your assistance. And then in Steam Font, we have Carolyn Sinderton, again from the Far Seas Trading Company. Obviously, she's a gnome, so it's a good reason she was assigned there. She's also a noted alchemist. She's one of the Farsi's experts on ore quality assays and other alchemical needs. Um, and uh, she's seeking assistance as well. So what this does is it sort of fills out the trade school quests um, in the 90 levels that we now have. So in the level 1 to 9 range, we've now got that new If I Had a Hammer intro, and we've got the tutorial of the Gazette already. Um, then in the level 10 range, we've now got the, the New Palace Good and Evil quest lines. The level 20 range now has the Butcher Block quest line. The level 30 range, we've now got the Steam Font quest line. We already had the Lava Storm quest line with the Sifut Goblins. Um, starts with Perla at the Lava Storm docks. That's been in for a little while since we uh, revamped uh, Lava Storm. And that is in the 40 to 49 range. And then at 50, obviously, all of the, uh, the Isle of Mara quests unlock. We've got all the Farsi's group trade skill missions, and you can also start doing the Shadow Odyssey uh, quest line out in the wars of Yukesha. Level 60 to 69, we've got the Keenark Sokakar quest line. I'd like to see a little more added in there when time permits, but um, that will be something that hopefully we'll see in the future. The level 70s brought us Keenark, and a lot of the trade skill quests that go all over Keenark. Um, also the Epic quest, obviously, at level 80. And then level 80 to 89 has probably the most trade skill quests of any level range with all of the Sentinel's Fate factions, plus the new signature quest. So as you can see, we're working very hard towards getting a well-rounded quest selection on pretty much every level range, which should give crafters a really good alternative to just doing this and get people out there a little bit instead of stuck in their guild hall or in their crafting instance just crafting away. I think it's, 
I think it's a lot more fun to get out to the world. And I mean, you don't have to do it if you don't like it, but it definitely adds a lot of interest and diversity if that does interest you. So, I know you're impatiently waiting to hear what's next. As you know, Velius is coming, otherwise known as Return of the Void. No, uh, Velius. <laughs> so housing. Uh, housing will obviously continue going forward to be a unique and rich part of EQ2. I mean, you've probably looked at other games, I know I have, and there's nothing like EQ2's housing out there at all. It's fabulous. And um, there's no specific player housing plan in Velius at this time, but you will definitely be able to expect more house items, uh, both from Carpenters and from Quests, and some of that will be Bellius themed and some of it won't, but I'm sure there'll be a lot of exciting new items as our artists go through and start making things for those zones. We also hope, in the future, to start looking at options for more unique prestige housing, we're calling it. This would be specially themed houses that you could choose to use instead of your normal city housing. So these prestige housing theme homes could replace your current home, they're not in addition to it, so you can still only have one house per character. If you don't want it on your main character, you know, stick it on an alt, not a problem. The first theme home we're offering is the Skyblade Skiff. That's included free in the cost of the Fanfare Platinum Pass, so many of you will already be eligible to get it, and once uh, Fanfare ends, we'll be looking at renting that to your account. I'm sure they'll be posted on the forums when that's done. Here's a screenshot of it. The sunsets are awesome from up there. If you look down, you just see nothing but clouds. If you jump over the side, you will actually fall into a random zone, which may or may not be somewhere you wanted to land, so take care. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, it looks like, obviously, a skiff. Um, there's no rooms in it, it's just the deck surface. You can build anything you want to on the deck. Uh, but it is the size of a five-room home, so it's got a 600 item limit, it's got five broker slots, it's essentially five-room home size. And you will find zone-in portals will be added to South Kinos and South Freeport. They, uh, the ones in South Kinos, I know, are right in Baleport, opposite the Mage Tower, it looks like a little stone pedestal, it's got a couple of red wings on top like you see on the skiff. It's pretty obvious, you should see it. And just click that and you'll zone up to your skiff. And just to give you an idea of the scale, here's a close-up of the deck. And that is halfling size, so you can see it's pretty roomy. And if you don't want to jump over the side to leave, there is a little zone out widget you can click. Take you back to safety. <laughs> so if you were not a Platinum Pass attendee, but you really want this, you can visit the station store booth before the end of today um, to purchase that upgrade if you want. Um, but also we will be looking at more prestige housing possibilities in the future. Um, so the details and the timeline are still to be determined, and it's obviously going to depend a bit on how well the Skylight Skiff is received, but I think that you can expect to see other options coming in the future. And I'm really excited to see what we can do with that, because uh, you know people like to customize their homes a lot, and people can do a lot with furniture already, uh, but it's pretty awesome to have completely new zones to play with. So, trade skill-wise, coming expansion. There's no level cap rise. Uh, so the trade skill content is going to be kind of similar to the way it was in previous zones where there was no level cap rise. Um, it's going to be more focused on quests and uh, faction work. You'll definitely be able to do some faction work for uh, Thurgoodin, you know, the dwarves there. They'll definitely need a lot of help, but there may be some other areas where you can help. Crafters are going to be able to earn recipes for new higher level items, uh, similar, to the way, similar to the way we did in Cunarch. Uh, but a little more quests to, uh, to earn that faction, more like Sentinel's Fate. Um, there, we are looking at having more of the loot, the drops in the dungeons and raids, um, actually require a crafter to finish it off, so you might get, say, a pattern and have to take it to a crafter and they will finish it. Um, I'm going to be working with the people who are doing the dungeons and we're going to be working that out, but definitely something we want to see more of. <coughs> Um, the harvestables in Velius didn't really make a lot of sense for you to be harvesting like Altiran diamonds and Cabrite out in Velius. So we are at this point planning to have a separate set of harvestables in Velius. These will be used for the Velius recipes.